sister truth. Welcome to the Stiff Truth. I am Bob West, and I am here with the illustrious Scott Casanova. Um, coming off of a fantastic Fourth of July weekend, uh, and then getting Monday off. How, how, how beautiful is that? How you doing, Scott? Doing great, and God bless Fourth of July being on a Sunday because you have to get a day off and recognize it on some day of the week. So it's it's a nice little uh, technicality day for sure. I'm telling you, man, I had a I'll just say a delightful day yesterday. There's really no other way to chalk it up besides that. Start to finish, fantastic. I mean, literally, Bob, I'll just get right into it here. I got up, and the first thing that was on my mind, and this is great when this is the first thing that's on your mind. I guys, I, I, I got I to gotta start the Traeger. I got to get the ribs going like right away. So like 7.30, I'm up there just getting a couple of nice fat racks of ribs all doctored up from the night before on the Traeger. And I... I will tell you this too. I, I, I think I came up with like a, um, a, a name for my, for my ribs, but I call them workday ribs because they were literally on there for eight hours. What do you think? Pretty nice. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It was good, man. But yeah, you're, you're going places. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> um, but now dude, phenomenal day, man. I mean, dude, we were outside just grilling different things and, 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 Fucking around in the pool, hanging out, listening to music. It was well, just a blast, Scott. Man. This is a radio program. I mean, you gotta elaborate. What, different things. What, what what were you grilling? Okay, okay. Well, again, started with the um, started with the baby back ribs. Those were on there, probably solo. So they were just a lonely couple of big fat racks on there for a few hours. Then I got the um, the the jalapeno poppers with like the half cut jalapenos filled with cream cheese wrapped in the bacon slices of course, you know those, 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 oh, those yeah. little nasty bad boys got those rocking in there then we had um jalapeno pepper jack stuffed uh hamburgers going after that it was phenomenal and then we ended the grills uh the day with um some shish kebabs so I had some uh you know some red onion some chop like um yellow squash chicken um you name it yeah it, it was it was fantastic i mean the grill was running all day like literally from the beginning of the day till the end of the day and then of course I, I will tell you this too i don't know if you can get it in new mexico but i'm thinking maybe you can i don't know if you saw my post last week but the most refreshing summer beer is from 21st amendment brewery they're out of san francisco they make something called hell or high watermelon and it's a a wheat beer that's 4.9 percent you know like a nice light lager but it's brewed with the watermelon rind not the actual like fruit itself so it's not an overly powering like sweet like kind of fruity beer although i'm very fruity it is hands down the best summer beer and i am um, we went through about well, over over the course of a few days, I got like an 18 pack of them because they just have six packs of them. So those those were pumping through the bloodstream constant yesterday, too. So that was phenomenal. Hopefully that's a little bit better on the detail for you. Did I do a good job? I, I think you did. Okay, uh, you. Uh, that's thank that's God. the kind of detail that we need around here. Uh, <laughs> what about yourself, baby? So one to ten, you know, uh, how, how was your fourth? Man, you know what? I'll tell you. I'm going to give it a, a solid 10 and I'm not being over dramatic here. The other thing that I noticed, and you may, may have noticed this too, but as things got dim, I want to say, you know, around dusk was around like eight o'clock, like now 830 when it really started, started to fade away. Dude, the fireworks in my neighborhood were fucking pumping, dude. And a lot of people went to Wyoming to get their fireworks around here, dude, because it was like a legit, like stadium style fireworks show just i think there was dudes driving around and like stopping and like just the middle you know like uh four-way stops or whatever in the neighborhood here setting off a couple of ridiculous fireworks and then like driving around doing other stuff because it was lit but every household was just going nuts man and we had people like just coming out and just just really vibing last night and both me and jamie were saying like damn like the fireworks are fucking no pun intended. They're lit this year, dude. We have never experienced this in the neighborhood. So it wasn't just me and my beautiful cooking and all the things doing at the house. I think people were, you know, like they, they got out a lot of pent up, just, just 
I don't know, man. I wouldn't say aggression, really. Just, just wanting to get out there and just fucking celebrate and party, man. And I think no matter where you're at in the country, July 4th, even for some of the places that are had still some pretty heavy restrictions because of the pandemic, they finally eased up. I know New York City had plans to do it on the 4th. So I think there was just an overall badass feeling uh, yesterday. At least that's, that's what I was feeling up here. What about you, baby? So I 100% agree with that. It was similar here in my neighborhood uh, in Rio Rancho. For those that don't know, that's in New Mexico, a um, little suburb of, of Albuquerque. Anyway, um, so 4th of July was fucking phenomenal. I also give mine a 10. So I will, I will get into some details of what, what happened on, on our weekend. First, you know, you get the whole weekend, which is amazing in general. Right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Uh, plus I had um, uh, I was going to say a few drinks Friday off. No, <laughs> I actually, I, I didn't drink very much in the fourth. So I, I crushed one beer because my, my son is like, uh, I want to bust out the bottle rockets. Hold that thought. <laughs> when pound a Stella, you'll need this. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, so mm-hmm. we got that down. Um, had some had some friends over dave and his family came over big shout out to dave uh and we had a fantastic time so it was sweltering hot so the one negative thing that did happen was um the swamp coolers weren't working very well it's a little humid and it's like 96 Ooh. degrees so it's like wow. 80 in my house you know so uh so there was that going on but we had fans everywhere it was whatever but you know we have the pool so it was perfect for that so like mm-hmm. all day long we're out there in and out of the pool, just hanging out around the pool, doing the pool thing, staying cool, love being that. awesome. Uh, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> but just to give you guys a real clear picture, we were in and out of the pool, just being fucking awesome, mind you. I like that. Very nice. <laughs> so so then, the, then the evening comes around, right? And then uh, we start grilling. We also do the kebabs. So we had the kebabs rolling. Um, nice. Just marinated four different oh. types of, of meat. Yeah, four different types of meat yesterday. So, so we had uh, shrimp, pork, chicken, beef, oh. all in different types of marinades. Oh, so, Jesus. so they were just all soaking in their own like de- delightful, you know, marinade all night long. And then uh, she kebabbed them up with Dave's wife, and they, they got them all ready, and we threw them on the grill. And there was a pile that was about a good ten inches high on uh, like a baking sheet of just kebabs, just craziness going on, right? Oh, so, man. so. Uh, it took me a couple of hours just to go through and cycle like these different sets of kebabs. So we're just oh. all running around with meat on a stick and, you know, pineapples in there, you know, oh, onion, Jesus. different color peppers, just, just awesome kebabness going on. And then uh, around four or five or so, we start, you know, with the black ads. So, so we made a trip out to Moriarty. That's so important for, for people for, that don't know. Tell that's them a little our bit about Moriarty. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. In so, more ways than one. Right. <laughs> there's, there's nobody so, there. It's very bleak, but they got badass fireworks, right? <laughs> so, yeah. So they sell fireworks year round here in New Mexico, right? Uh, you just can't pop them in city limits in most cities uh, unless it's, you know, the sanctioned New Year's window and fourth of july windows sure. but they do sell them year round and and you're expected to be responsible with that <laughs> so Naturally. so we go out to moriarty where there is no restrictions and i bought a brick of black hats do you mm. remember those well i tell you what man we talked about this the other day too just the pictures you sent me of the black hats uh, the, like the the m60 firecrackers and stuff like that what a throwback man i i was very jealous i'm just got to say that right now i'm so, very i'm still very jealous so we had Roma candles. Ah, oh, name brand too. I saw that. Name brand Roma <laughs> candles. We had uh, bottle rockets, uh, mm. little guys, big guys. Um, uh, David actually brought a couple of like, like actual rockets. They're wow. like had like fins and like a body and a fuselage and <laughs> and <Really>? those things. <laughs> <laughs> those you're things like, took off like nobody's business you know dave actually brought some uh rockets that stephen hawking made so. <laughs> <laughs> so so there's just these these badass rockets none of this is legal right so <laughs> so we have like 12 mortar shells that were out there oh, so we're that. popping mortars in the backyard we're, we're, we're bottle rockets so the the fireworking happened until about 11 30 or so at night uh, from beautiful. that point on and then uh i still have like half of that brick of black hats but we also had strips of black hats because we're it was a throwback for me once i got around all those old school fireworks and i just started like buying shit 
Yeah. And so several times we just popped a whole fucking string of black cats oh. and just pissed off all the dogs in the neighborhood. Just oh, <laughs> dude. Yeah. Yeah. How? Hey, by the way, how did your dog handle yesterday? Was he oh, my, medicated? My dog loves fireworks. I did oh. medicate him. Um, he has his trazodone, which, you know, we all know and love. But <laughs> <laughs> but I did medicate him with his medicine. So it was like kind of quality if he got anxious. He did not. Um, there was only a couple of times where he was really interested in the fireworks. And that was when it was, here's another throwback for you, Saturn missile time. Nice. So Very we had nice. like, like four or six packs of Saturn missiles. And those hmm. things. <laughs> So our neighbors fun. must love us like we've been here six months and we're already those guys you know so. hey hey I, I think justifiably though like yesterday right it's not like you were doing this on april 2nd or something like that <laughs> so like what no, the fuck and, is the neighbor doing and there was fireworks show you know there's one at the balloon park there was a yeah. the rio rancho opened up a new civic center amphitheater thing over there by the the star center Mm -hmm. um, and they did the ribbon cutting yesterday and then proceeded to have it all open and vending and then a firework uh, mm -hmm. event all night long. So Rio Rancho was getting down. Here is the most beautiful thing that happened yesterday. Oh, hold on. Go ahead. I'm leaning We're, in. we're grilling kebabs. Yeah, I'm on the third out of fourth waves of full grill of kebabs. So, so, so we have a pile of meat and a pile of meat still to go and I'm grilling and the storm clouds just roll up. Ooh. and no shit it rains for about 20 minutes clearing the path for the illegal fireworks <laughs> for the whole city yeah <laughs> after that rainstorm you could hear it while it's still sprinkling the first mortar shell about a street over kaboom i was like here we go because yeah. now no one is afraid <laughs> of anything including the firefighters you know was, even mother nature came out so you know what let me damper it down just a little bit for everybody here so we can have it was good perfect time. it cooled it down mm. uh it was kind of cloudy for the whole rest of the day uh, mm -hmm. that rainstorm wet everything so there's no more fire danger and after that it was on the neighborhood much like yours lit the fuck up for hours at that point it was Dude. so incredible again I'm not overselling it yesterday I felt like we were absolutely 100% living our best life 10 out of 10 amazing fucking, day fucking america fucking america seriously we had this similar weather up here it was late afternoon we got two quick little uh tea showers we'll just say you know it was like about 20 30 minutes and then like about 45 minutes later a little bit more and then it was just cleared up cleared up again um i mean it wasn't brutally hot here yesterday but god damn that sounds fantastic i get super jealous of the fireworks i think though knowing now how excited elizabeth got about fireworks and there was an instant where one was like kind of just you know being like being like a little bitch at first and then it gets kind of crazy she like fell out of her little seat she was sitting and it was so intense but now i know i'm gonna be one of those guys driving to wyoming to stock up on the fireworks next year because wow what a difference that makes what are the say. funniest moments when i was out buying fireworks i was just like oh look there's these big ass uh fountains yeah, but I was yeah. in Moriarty. So I was just like, oh, yeah, like two for 12. Yeah, I'll get a couple of these, whatever. Cute and so yeah. we're all like doing our firework thing. And we're kind of like building up. The fireworks are getting bigger and, and better. And the mortars are starting to occasionally go off. And then I throw this fountain out there. And uh, and it starts off. And it's this nice little fountain. It's popping. It's doing its fountain thing. And then the fountain stops. And then yeah. kaboom, six mortars. <laughs> just yeah. taking off out of this fountain. And Jess is like, that's a Moriarty fountain. <laughs> Seriously, that was probably homemade or something like oh, that. It that's was great. so epic. Everyone was just like, whoa, what the hell is happening? Stand back when you let the Moriarty shit. Oh, <laughs> you I don't love know that. what's in there. <laughs> yeah, great times, man. Great, great times. And and nothing better than having today off, too, because again. I didn't go crazy yesterday, but I actually slept in this morning. And for me, that's about 8 a.m. That's like two hours, you know, two hour and a half, two hours over what I normally do. But I felt phenomenal when I got up and knowing I had nothing to do today. But then but but to talk to looking forward to speaking with you and everybody out there in podcast land. It was great. Yeah. And great. recapping our shit for everyone out there. Um, me and Scott have not talked since yesterday. So these are okay. these are brand new, exciting stories. Lots of active listening going on today, <laughs> as opposed to most days. <laughs> yeah, it, it's tough. I do almost need a drink, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to get through this. It's a good exercise. You know, you got to be uncomfortable to grow. Is that what it said? Is that what they That's say? Right. Out of your comfort zone <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. What, what an incredible day. Um, I really, I, I had some drinks yesterday, but uh, nothing 
nothing really noticeable like uh you know head change wise it's just kind of took a few shots had that one beer and well, there's just so much going on i, I really didn't want to you know well, go overboard while i'm trying you, to let the sun light all the fireworks exactly i was just gonna say you did mortars and you did have like little little bombs in some of the firecrackers that you had so it's probably a good idea and i'll tell you same thing i was i was reflecting on it this morning in the shower as i normally do um but i was thinking about myself like you know what i had that really nice like one to two drinks per hour for like eight, nine hours yesterday. Yeah. You know what I mean? But but honestly, I didn't get over the top. I did, I will admit, as the evening started progressing, I started getting a little bit more excited from the fireworks that were going on. I was like, fucking hey, this is exciting. I'm gonna go make myself a fucking wall banger. So I did have a couple of wall bangers to end the evening, but you know, it was just a nice constant, just steady buzz all day I, long. I will tell you this, since you've now been over and you've you know kind of know the layout of the land, I, I did find out that my yard, and I'm really, really stoked to say this, is big enough for us to handle roaming roaming candles in the yard. Like mm. we didn't even have to like go to the street or anything crazy. Uh, just one side of the yard to the other, just boom, boom, boom. And then I got daring a little bit closer to the fence, and I was like, "This is how we used to do it." And I started like showing him how they hit the the the, the brick wall. Yeah, and he was 100%. just like, "That's crazy." It's like, "Yeah, you want to put a hoodie on before yeah. you start getting going that path." <sighs> just saying, at some point, it will happen. Uh, mm. There will be a roaming candle burn. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but God, those are so fun because again, just to reflect on that once more, and I know this is pretty dangerous, but how fun is it to act like you and your buddy or your brother or whatever are superheroes and you both have Roman candles in each hand with like a trench coat on and you're firing like, you know, your superhero powers out of your hands uh, to them, you know? Oh, no, I mean? there's it's, like it's diving great. and rolling happening at that point. <laughs> <laughs> so, burns, burns in your crotch and like the pants where, you know, you almost, almost got you. But some, my some, goodness. some sick teenage boy stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. God damn. It, it was, it was awesome. It was awesome just to let loose. It was awesome to not have any masks. I didn't think about COVID or anything one time yesterday. It was pretty epic. Uh, so I, I think, I think there's a lot of that from the sounds of your area and my area that people were just like finally having a normal holiday mm. you know, relatively in a, and then not to under school or like, you know, b- gloss over the, thousands of people that are in the hospital right now i know it's still happening and it's not over but for for the you know <clears throat> a lot of parts of the country uh people can act like you know the well, worst of it is over i'm gonna go ahead and be an asshole and just say this i don't know the stats for your state but i'm pretty sure they're similar or probably a little bit better than ours but we're at about 70 something percent of fully vaccinated citizens in colorado so Things are back to normal here uh, yeah. versus places like, let's just say Missouri for a lot of people out there that are, you know, I think it's still, I, I think that's one of the lowest vaccinated states and they're, they're facing the biggest <laughs> outbreaks right now. Yeah. So say what you will about I mean, the vaccine, but um, you know who else had a really good week? I'll tell you who, Mr. Bill Cosby. <laughs> Well, the pudding pop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the pudding pop man is back. I'm sure everybody heard this, but Bob, um, I'll tell you what, I did a little did a little digging on this here. It's not surprising what happened. I don't know if you got to check it out or not, but just in I, case- I did a little bit of reading on it. Yeah. OK, good. So if if, if people aren't in the know here, uh, Bill Cosby, um, who was who was who was found guilty of sexual misconduct and harassment and on what is it? Uh, on consensual sex, non consensual sex with a woman. Um, he was found guilty and he was sentenced to two to 10 years um, in, in, in prison, Bill Cosby's out. And it doesn't look like he's going back at all. In fact, it really looks like if they want to try to go at this again, it's going to be almost nearly impossible, especially if they try to get him on the same charges. And I think it's really interesting here because there's definitely a lot of people upset, rightfully so. Um, but it looks like Mr. Bill Cosby <clears throat> did get out on a hardcore technicality, but it kind of makes sense from a black and white perspective. I've heard people argue both sides of it, but essentially what happened is back in 2015, he was basically, and this was never, I guess, it wasn't done the way I think it was supposed to be done per se, but he was kind of given immunity to a certain extent from a prosecutor. So he could, and this is what the prosecutor wanted to do. He wanted to 
let Cosby feel that he could testify and say things that could potentially incriminate him for a civil suit, not the criminal suit. But he was under the understanding and also believed and trusted in his lawyer that told him that, hey, because of what this guy said, you can say what you, whatever you have to say in this civil suit. Let's get this shit taken care of. And they won't be able to use that against you and your criminal trial. And they did. So apparently Cosby's team was kicking and screaming and, and, and you know, fighting this for a little while. And then last week, the uh, Pennsylvania Supreme Court overturned it and said that basically what, you know, what his lawyers uh, were arguing was correct. And it didn't make sense in good faith to keep him in prison, um, knowing that understanding that they had. Now, again, I've heard some people argue that and say, well, it wasn't done the right way. They didn't go get like immunity like. I don't know what it is, like official immunity from like a judge and get the stamp of approval or something like that. I don't know. What did you hear, though, Bob? So so basically in 2005 was that civil suit, right, that uh, he did the he, he made an agreement, a signed mm -hmm. agreement with the prosecution that they would not pursue criminal mm -hmm. charges to then free him up to testify in the civil case. The right. reason that they did that was obviously they didn't think they had a good enough chance to prosecute that case on a criminal level. And so they did that so that at least there, there could be some sort of, you know, justice in the civil trial for this action. And right? In addition to that, it wasn't like it was done as a mood point or anything like that. I mean, I believe the civil trial was won in favor of the defendant and right. got millions of dollars from Bill Cosby. Now, <clears throat> granted, it's millions of dollars, not jail, but that's what civil court does. They're not sentencing him to, to you know criminal jail. So, I mean, it worked for what they wanted it to do, but this was quite a little loophole. I mean, there's a lot of people that are super, super pissed off. Of course, the legal team that went against Cosby is very upset. A lot of the women that have accused him over the whatever decade very very upset um it's interesting to me though i know it's very it's a it's a big technicality and everything but to me I'm, I'm i'm reading about this i'm watching this stuff and i'm just like well so it might free him up you know to testify in the civil thing and it, it'll free him up to say incriminating things about him that'll basically prove the point of all the accusers out there that he's doing some really right. shady shit but we can't use that against him because the court and this prosecutor decided this is the way it's going to be. It is kind of a little bit nasty in the sense, like that's how law works, but he is guilty, but you can't use it against him now because we got this special little deal. Yeah. And there's a, there's a couple of things that kind of get me on this one, right? First, uh, when, what the, the Pennsylvania Supreme court basically decided was the practices of the prosecution uh, basically duped him out of his fifth amendment, right? That's that was the whole thing there is that mm -hmm. they tricked him out of the Fifth Amendment. Right. And then the second sleazy thing that happened in all of this was weeks to go before the statute of limitations on this. They pull that case. They go against that agreement. They they not only do that, but in the trial of 2015, they literally use his testimony in that civil case as factual evidence mm -hmm. in the 2015 case, specifically going against everything that they had agreed on going against his fifth amendment. Cause obviously in the criminal trial, he would have shut the fuck up, pled the fifth and just let the lawyers hash it out. And that's why the most likely they didn't prosecute this case back then. Right. 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 Cause it's a, he said, she said thing. There's no physical mm -hmm. evidence. How are you going to get a conviction beyond a reasonable doubt like that without him actually being forthcoming and then them using the evidence. So the reason they did that was because of the me too movement. Right. And they had a, a big case here that could get a lot of recognition and make some people famous, including the prosecutors. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's pretty sleazy. Now, it, it, the Supreme Court, eventually, they just they don't they don't care about justice. They don't care about who got wronged. All they care about is what was performed by the letter of the Pennsylvania state law. Yeah. And then they they finally did say, hey. You guys fucked this guy over. Not to say that Bill Cosby is a fucking saint because he's a piece of shit that was raping girls after he drugged them and they're fucking asleep. Hey, you know baby, I mean? that, that's, America's America's dad. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't get much more fucking shitty of a guy, especially, uh, you know, if you have a wife or daughter or sister or mother, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So f fuck Bill Cosby. But uh, the prosecution, uh, in, in my mind, it is just as bad i mean well true i mean to parade did, this case around in the media and try to use it to like make yourself famous and all yeah. this when you already know that you're now 
going against the very law that you're supposed to be abiding by and everything and making up your own law now and, and just deciding on if, if anyone has name your amendment, right. It, it, when it suits your needs. Now that's despicable. Uh, that's, that's anti-American as it gets. Yeah. And, and say what you will, again, it doesn't matter. And this is the, this is the good thing about law. It doesn't matter. It's very, um objective right it's it doesn't take sides and it doesn't matter who the fuck it is everybody deserves due process and that's kind of what they fell on that he was stripped of right by doing this to him because you're absolutely right it doesn't matter who he is but you do have your rights and if you go into a criminal trial you should be able to plead the fifth you should be able to do these things you shouldn't be you shouldn't be kind of duped like like he was so again i get why it happened but the other thing is this too with the statute of limitations coming up here. If they're going to go back after this case again, especially with the same person, um, it's just not going to happen from what I'm understanding. And no, he's I'm out and it's yeah. over. It's yeah. just over. So what they're going to have to do, if you want to put Cosby back in jail to really make him, um, you know, <laughs> to, to make him suffer and to get what was supposed to be coming to him. First of all, he's 83 years old. So there's, there's the clock is ticking on, on this kind of shit for it even to matter to this guy anymore. He's only got so much time left. But what literally has to happen is somebody else is going to have to come forward with brand new ch- um, allegations and brand new evidence solid enough to like go from square one again, it, which again, it just doesn't seem like that's going to happen. So Mr. Pudding Pops is out. He can enjoy, enjoy what's uh, left of his golden years, which I don't know, a couple years in prison for a guy that's been in the, the spotlight and fame and fortune for the past like five, six decades. I don't, I think he probably did serve his time in, in a certain degree. I mean, he's 83 years old now, but here we are. So he's out. Yeah, I mean, he's done three years. Yeah. Uh, right now, I mean, I don't know how much longer of a sentence that he would have gotten, even if he would have been found, you know, guilty back in 2005 uh, and received a sentence with like no priors. I, I would imagine it's probably be something in the three to five year range anyway. So, I mean, he did go to jail. So uh, there's a little bit of indication uh, from you know some of his victims that he did see life behind bars for a while uh, it's not their fault that the prosecution just completely fucking blew this case up sorry i was yelling at my dog no 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 you're good, <laughs> you're good. yeah they, they, they fucked the pooch on that man well i'll tell you what a couple of things here bob um we could get a drink right now because i'm getting a little bit thirsty but we can also we can also dive into um, what's been going on in the NBA playoffs. We have now we have now our two candidates here for who's in the finals. It's pretty exciting stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, very interesting. Um, I say we just get right on into the NBA playoffs, and then we'll Let's go do it real quick. I like that. Um, it's Buck Suns. For any of you that haven't been paying attention to the NBA playoffs, I know not everyone's NBA Shame favorites, on you. But, Shame on you. But it's the Bucks and the Suns. Uh, neither one of them has ever won. This before. is super exciting. I was I was pulling the other night for the Bucks so bad. I, you know, and I did say, which I was wrong, but slightly wrong, only slightly wrong. I did think they were going to push it to a game seven, but meaning meeting the the Hawks, but they didn't. And they um they did it without Giannis too, which is very, very impressive. And he should be back because the young kid hyper extended his knee or what have you, but had to rest a couple of, you know, a game or two. He should be back rocking and rolling. But dude, I'll tell you what, very, very pumped that it's not the usual suspects in the finals. Like you were just saying, no, super, this is super a pumped. great NBA finals. I mean, either way, uh, a hall of famer is getting a ring right now. Right. So, mm-hmm. and I know you it, want it to be Chris Paul. I, I do. Know you do. I do. I know you do. Uh, I, I, I think it's his time. I think, I think they're going to do it too. I think the Suns are, are a better team than the Bucks. Um, mm-hmm. Interesting. But we'll see. Now, this is the classic uh, defense wins championships. The Bucks mm-hmm. are very good at, at defense, very, very good at defense. But Giannis is banged up and um, they're not as good at offense. And I think yeah. that the Suns are a little bit better offensively and they're still good at defense too. The, they're a little more balanced, but um, the Suns have been taking advantage of injuries the whole playoffs. I mean, in the first round, Anthony Davis goes down. So they yeah. beat the Lakers. Yeah. 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 And the second round, uh, Jamal Murray is down. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they beat the Nuggets, you know? And then in the third round, um, who, who went down in the last round? 
Oh, uh, da, 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 da. um, Jesus, like the Clippers. Oh, oh, remember. uh, Kawhi. Yeah, yeah, Kawhi yeah, Leonard. Kawhi went down. So it's basically, like, every almost every All Star, mm, minus Denver, I guess, because the Joker would have to be like, you know, but he was by himself injury. at that point. I mean, so true, and they and they got swept. They got right. swept. That wasn't even like a competition. I will say this though, um, really, really in, uh, impressed with uh, Booker and Paul. I think those guys continue to have the leadership that they're having on that team, especially Devin Booker. He's, he's just doing a fantastic job of stepping up to the plate. I, I say they win it all, but I am, I am, I am kind of um, thinking right now, if, if Giannis is, is comes back and does his kind of freak show that he, I think it did in game three or four of this last series, it could be really interesting. Dare I say this could be a seven game series. I know that's what everybody wants out there. Who's just a avid uh, spectator fan of NBA. Right well, now. to Let's me, a it. six or seven game series is almost the same. Nothing's quite as exciting as a game seven of any yeah. sport, but yeah. the game six is a three to two. It's an elimination game to try to get to game seven. So if, if a series goes to six, I think everyone wins. Yeah. If it's a sweep or five game series, then, you know, it, it's whatever, but. You know, a good series is at least six, right? Mm-hmm. That, that's kind of my thoughts on it. Yeah, I guess less than that, and it's really lopsided one way, right? Which is fun for if that's your team, right? If the Mavs were there and they won it like, you know, four and two or something like that or four and one or no, no, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, they just swept them. Then, then it's it's fun for you, but it's not necessarily fun for the average spectator. Well, I'll say this. Or the um, league. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Or advertising or I've, I've shit the bed and missed the mark on almost everything for the playoffs so far. I think I had the Nets winning it all. I had Denver winning a lot more. But now that we're here, there's there's a lot of less speculation and forecasting that we can do here. Give me give me the winner and give me how many games it takes. I'll do the same. And let's see Phoenix who gets closer. Six. Phoenix in six. Yeah. All right. I'm going to say the Bucks. Answer, I'm going to say the Bucks in six. All right. All right. There we go. All right. So. I'll say, I would say a gentleman's bet, but I want to wager something here. So what are you thinking? Oh, huh? yeah. I, don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's pretty tasty, that's, huh? That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, you just uh, put me on the spot. And you just dropped yeah. it on me. I did. I, did um, I mean, there's always the customary, you know, bottle of scotch. <laughs> yes, yes, there is. Well, do we and up t- that to a bottle of red breast? I was just about to say, I just threw away my bottle of red breast. I'd finished the other night. Finally, finally just polish that bad boy off that i got for father's day so i'm i'm hurting for another bottle of red breast I so think probably games aside games aside since we're obviously picking different teams to win let's just put a bottle of red breast on it and call it okay bottle of red breast on it you got the suns i'll take the bucks yeah there we go fear the deer baby let's go see look at me i'm all of a sudden a huge bucks fan <laughs> <laughs> go on Giannis. bring daddy his red breast <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally going to be screaming at the screen because this is, I got a lot of shit on the line here. Okay. I don't usually go full force with my betting, but here we are. So I have a, I have a question about a drink. I, I know it's a floater and I know it's tequila and I know it is, uh, was it tequila and soca? Yes. Yes. Right, tequila and soca. Um, what's floated? The tequila goes first and the soca is floated or? Um, I know I, I could can't. just look in the book, but. I can't remember, to be honest. I want to say that the tequila's on the bottom and the Soco's on the top, but don't quote me. I'm going to have to go look at my bartender book when we go get oh, one. I'll look at the bartender book. So anyway, we're um, we're drinking gasoline. <laughs> Coming up after the break. <laughs> I told you, we are really stepping up our game here on the Stiff Truth. No more bullshit pussy cocktails. Strong as fuck. So you want to go get some gasoline? Let's do it. All right. Cheers, guy. Oh, cheers all the way. Cheers to your tits. Cheers for beers. Oh, that's a great band. Cheers for beers. So easy to share. Who can make me I think all the way back. Four years ago, the night was a bottle of bubbly. Oh my goodness gracious. So SoCo on bottom. Yes, we did see that. So <laughs> first lesson learned. Um, floaters don't work when both of your boozes are the same color because I have Añejo tequila, not Blanco or anything like that. Oh, so. okay. So I used Hornitos. So it's not a traditional gold, but it is a gold. So let me see if I can get hey that right. Right there. that's nice buddy here look at these 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 may look familiar to you 
these little bad boys huh yeah i know i still need to work some too so jess got me these chai glasses but um they're like all the way filled to the top is an ounce and a half like to, to the top so they're kind of i don't know they're, they're nice but i still need more I, it didn't scratch the itch yeah i've noticed it an ounce or an ounce of each and each of the, uh, each of these bad boys is very very filled to the top but again would be nice to see what they look like with like a contrasting kind of you know um color and everything but it's okay here we are we've got gasoline folks and of course you probably heard it i mean what we got the bottom now southern comfort mm -mm -mm. bob's loves him some soco yeah it's it's really a two ounce shot like so yeah. it's, not, it's yeah. a little more than a traditional shot and it's a, mm -hmm. an ounce and an ounce um i did i went with a half and a half so that i could fit it in my glass but i, I got three of them so you know huh. good for you <laughs> i got a couple so let's go ahead raw dog it here my my chaser is water because i don't i'm not having another beverage so ready for some gasoline sir i uh, i am bottoms up <laughs> hmm. wait interesting now i can say this that is kind of not top shelf but we'll say higher than bottom shelf uh tequila that i have that in yeho so that on the top and then honestly cutting any kind of aftertaste that has with the sweetness of the soco not that bad i will say this though i'm that guy i like the and enjoy the smell of gasoline when i'm at the pump i always have since i was a little kid so not not so bad but now oh, okay. as I'm I'm kind of sitting here, that burn that I'm getting in my chest, that kind of feels a little bit strange. It definitely looks like gasoline. Yeah, this is very true. For sure. Like it 100%. definitely looks like gasoline. That and, um, and it's not bad. In fact, as the sweetness of the SoCo really takes the bite out of the tequila. Yeah. So it's not that like I'm not rushing to grab a lime slice <laughs> to try to. Oof chase that tequila aftertaste um man i've got to say um it's an interesting shot to know when you're at the bar like hey let's do a round of gasoline all right so that's kind of cool to know yeah. know about the shot um it's a shot of booze i mean <laughs> there's nothing special about it except for what a cool fucking name yeah very true and relevant <laughs> to the rest of our conversation bobby because absolutely I'm kind of thinking maybe that at one point in time in the near future, maybe the distant future, I'm not quite sure yet with knowing how we have a society as a whole has a hard time letting go of the status quo. Uh, maybe say, maybe say it's not too distant near future, but I don't know. Gasoline may be a thing of the past, or at least something you just use for recreational vehicles you know, on the weekends or something like that. You it's know it's I mean? a common um, over <laughs> the years. Uh, we have transitioned global energy sources several times right so it is a common and 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 it is you hear that mr anderson that is the sound of inevitability <laughs> busting out a matrix quote i nothing nothing wrong with that at all but first we'll get into it right here buddy because i want you to expand on a conversation we had earlier this week and and again if, if nobody's getting the subtleness here from 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 me and bobby we're we're going to be talking about we're going to be talking about fossil fuels and renewable energy and basically like what what something needs to break here we need to give way i mean we're, we're going in this direction we we should i think at least i don't know about you bob i'm not going to put words in your mouth here but i understand again we're kind of ingrained in fossil fuels and for good reason to a certain extent they're extremely reliable extremely reliable more so than say wind power but one thing that is really fucking badass is some of these electric cars that are coming out now and i'm not talking about tesla i'm not talking about the nissan leaf i'm not talking about the the chevy bolt or anything like that i'm talking to um cars with attitude cars with reputation and and not only that like um car brands with some umph to them correct what do you think buddy you know what like, i'm saying like uh you enlighten me to the new cadillac that's coming out oh, so 2023 cadillac's dropping a new crossover uh suv ev electric vehicle right so <clears throat> this thing it's kind of in the subaru class right looks like a little wagon kind of four-door hatchback um but this thing 
Oh, this thing is clean. To put it in the words uh, of Tommy Chong, you know, it's cleaner than a skater's Peter. I mean, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that was Cheech. I can't remember. But either way, um, the the Ford Mustang uh, Mach, Mach One EV. Yeah. That's a that's a sexy car right there. Mm-hmm. And, and and it as a Mustang like uh, lover, you know, it's it's kind of sacrilege. But then when you just look at the car and you really take the Mustang and separate it, and you just look at the car on its own merit, it's sexy. I mean, and, and it's got it's got everything you need. It's nice. Uh, it's not cheap. No, I, I believe those Mustangs start at fifty six. I think the new Cadillacs are going to start at fifty eight. So so they're not cheap. But go buy you a Model S because I don't know yeah. if you noticed, but the Model Threes are fucking ugly. But the Model S's aren't. But they're also one hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I was just about to say. I think base they're like ninety something thousand, and that's again if you want, which doesn't make any sense. But if you <laughs> If you want a Model S with roll-up windows, which is not really the case, guys, but you know what I'm saying. I'm saying bare bones, no added features or anything like that. I didn't think about that until I said it, Bob, that you can't have an electric car probably with roll-up windows. It doesn't make sense. It'd be pretty awesome, though. Like, hold on. <laughs> hey, it's like, hey, these windows are made with the top-notch, latest technology and renew- uh, re- reusable, renewable energy. Sustainable. What is it? It's your fucking, your, your, your fucking your elbow grease, arm. dude. <laughs> <laughs> And what's really cool is when the battery dies, there's this like button you push and the uh, the floor of the car disappears and you can fucking Flintstone it everywhere. It's awesome. <laughs> so the, the most exciting uh, car, I think, out there for several reasons, right, is the new F-150 Lightning. Um, Ford's F-150 has been the number one selling pickup truck for like 78 years or some shit like that. Well, you know why, right? Fucking time. You know why, right? Why is that? Because it's built for tough. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Unless it's found on road dead. Because that's like, that's what the Chevy owner said. <laughs> but, um, so a Ford F-150 is not only the best selling truck. I believe it's the highest selling vehicle in the world. I think more F-150s are sold every year than any other vehicle worldwide. Um, and that's huh. because they're very useful, right? obviously. They're, they're pickups. But then Ford also makes a lot of fleet deals. And they, they make sure this that big companies uh, mm-hmm. buy their products and they get the Fords out there, um, even if it's for nothing more than to flood the market for branding. So that, you know, Joe Schmo is driving by and they see this, you know, municipal truck driving by. And like, oh, that's a nice Ford. Oh, Ford. Ford, Ford, right? It's just marketing. It's everywhere. So the, the interesting thing about Ford, knowing the power of, of Ford as far as marketing and how everyone has an F-150, right? To, to have the F-150 out 100% electric could very well be a game changer in moving the market forward. Tesla's done a pretty good job, but they've always needed a competitor to take it out there that people want to buy it. Because let's be honest, a lot of the, the, the blue collar guys wouldn't touch a, a fucking cyber truck with a 10 foot pole, right? Just because it's a fucking Tesla, you fucking tree hugging hippie, right? But well, not only that, I mean, we love competition here in the free market, baby. You know what I mean? So even though Tesla's very innovative, they're going to step up their game that much more if they know they got the big box, the, the big three in America coming out with some legit fucking electric cars, right? Huh? Yeah, now yeah, Ford's, not, Ford's, not uh, Ford's not pulling any punches. With the F-150. Um, the interesting thing about... Well, the maybe some donkey punches. Maybe some donkey punches. <laughs> so the F-150 actually has over 400 torque. You know, so over 404 pounds of torque base. That's a lot of towing capacity. In fact, I'm fairly certain that the, the electric F-150 out tows the V8 F-150. Uh, and the I wouldn't be su- F-150. I, and the I twin honestly- turbo F-150. I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised. Say what you will. Maybe 10 to 20 years ago, electric cars were a little bitch made, but they are extremely powerful now. I mean, what does the Model S, just using that one again, is it like zero to 60 in like two, three, two something, three it's seconds? Like, something it's re- like just under three seconds, I think. That's, it's fucking, so it's fucking to ridiculous. To put that in perspective, the old like 
uh, ninjas, uh, Kawasaki's, uh, oh, I love Suzuki a good the, the Honda CBRs in the 90s when we were growing up. The big barrier there was three seconds. So the, the sick crotch rockets that were like, you know, the, the 1300s and whatever, they would do zero to 60 in like 2.9 seconds. And that was the uh-huh. fastest thing that the road had ever seen, right? That was commercially available. Um, but the, the electric vehicles can rival that. And that's just off the floor. Now, this is a truck, mind you. It's a big vehicle, but I just looked it up. Do you know the zero to 60 for the, the new F-150 Lightning? I want to say it's like 4.4. Close. A little bit better than that, but only a cunt hair. 4.3. 4.3. See, so see how I was able to squeeze in, in cunt hair? That was pretty good, right? <laughs> 4.3 seconds is the kind of torque that I don't know if you'd be able to grab a $100 bill on the dash if it was free, if you could get it. That's yeah. the kind of horsepower and the kind of Gs that you're kind of pushing back against at that kind of speed. And to put this in perspective for other people, 4.3 seconds, that gives Bob enough time to climax twice. Twice. <laughs> That's with a Gatorade. See what happens when I drink gasoline on the show? Woo! Come on. Speaking of, I mean, why not? Hey, cheers to you. And and I don't know about you, but mine's premium because I have I a high performance machine here. It's so easier for me premium. because mine's a half shot. <laughs> Woo! Hey, America, gasoline. Now, I will tell you this. I did do um kind of a no-no yesterday and i started a fire with gasoline just so you know oh i bet it worked it, it really did <laughs> <laughs> good for you was yeah, everything buddy. a little wet from the shower it was just a little bit everything you know what i mean i, I was telling james i was like you know what i could take that piece of wood and just do a couple of drips on each side we'll be fine we'll this will it will do it and you it know what is. else is good too if you ever want to keep a can of liquid sterno they're pretty cheap just keep a can of that so if anything's ever wet you just smear some on it it's, it's basically napalm so you just oh. smear some on and light that shit on fire and it burns slow it burns hot and it'll, it'll start your fire a little little boy scout tip <laughs> you heard it here first folks and from our eagle scout mr well, bob west i was an eagle scout My dad was, <laughs> but My dad was. so you're what's called a star scout so that's okay. uh so go star life in the eagle so okay. i was okay. i was a star scout when i left the scouts well you got up there you you did fuck your way almost to the top we'll, we'll i did i did <laughs> i sucked my way almost to life <laughs> and then that goddamn dislocated jaw kicked in and it really stopped me from being an eagle scout <laughs> really helped me back i didn't get to go volunteer at old folks homes or nothing <laughs> so oh. So as far as the uh, the F-150 goes, I was looking at trucks because I want one. I'm at that age. I don't have one. Um, as far as cars go, it's it's my turn, right? So uh, we got the Pathfinder a few years ago. We actually traded in Jesse's Mazda to get it, right? And uh, mm-hmm. that thing's getting close to being paid off at this point. And I'm driving a fucking bucket, right? A 2005 Ford Focus base model with roll-up windows. Hey, Nothing like some renewable energy there. You know what I mean? I rolled the window with one HP. That's human power. Mm, (laughs) Well, if it's it's your left hand, it's half. It's half. It's a half of HP. Or or heaven forbid, you have to like roll up or down the right of the passenger side window while you're driving. Oh, that's Reach over the stick shift and you're like trying to hold it straight while you're trying not to wreck on the freeway because it started raining or whatever. Yeah, that's me driving my old Focus. Mm. Quarter million miles in that cycle. So it would appear to be my turn. Hey, you just want to get a new vehicle. I will say this too. When when you say a quarter million instead of 250,000 miles, it sounds like a fuckload more than 250,000 miles. You know what I mean? I like that. I like what you did there because yeah, it's, you, it's all you, about you, presentation, Scott. Yeah, you blew up the um the you know the the problem to make it seem more than it is it just made it more dramatic and impactful no i measure mine in uh, as opposed to fractions of a million now well (laughs) did did i mention because of the way you laid that out i now want to make sure that i make i make the down payment on your new electric vehicle because i i need it now for you that's how (laughs) that's how impactful that was so kudos to you good job sir well that's going to be a hell of a down payment because the 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 one that i want starts at fifty eight thousand. Don't worry, I'm taking out a second mortgage. Everything's going to be okay. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I was looking at the packages uh, uh, when I'm looking at the trucks, and I, st- I pieced together a truck, an F-150, not electric. It was actually a hybrid engine. So well, half electric, you, half gas. Can I ask you this real quick? When you do this, because I've done it before, when you get on the website and you start building your own Bobby truck, right, or whatever mm-hmm. it is, when you 
Do you get a little bit of a chub? Because I know I do when I get on the online, start building my own car. It's it's pretty good. I've never done it. This is the first time. I've never even considered a new vehicle before. So I guess I'm winning at life that I've reached that point to where I'm like, I should just get a new vehicle. I'll get a better interest rate and a better and a better lending position. You know what I mean? I'll tell you this. The only time that I've got a brand new vehicle off the lot, like the first first miles on it, is when I got Jamie's, I want to say 2012 or 13 Hyundai Elantra, you know? Because we were going to get certified used, but just the way that everything was broken down with pricing for some odd reason, very odd reason. I'll, I'll highlight that because I usually like certified used. It was actually advantageous cost-wise to get the brand new vehicle. But other than that, it's either been me, used vehicles, transition of ownership from somebody else I know or something like that. I've never gotten a brand new vehicle. Off well, I was looking at my, my price. Well, besides that. I'll actually that. have a lower monthly payment if I got a new F-150 Lariat. Than if I got a two-year-old F-150 with 40,000 miles. It's interesting, isn't it? It makes no sense. Like well, the, the, the reason is because I'll get an extra year huh. uh, on a new car. They'll give me 84 months, right? Instead of 72 months. All right. So, and I'll get a better interest rate because the banks are much more apt to give you the better deal when you get a new vehicle. So huh. probably because it's a little bit more pricey. I, you know, I'm sure they make a little bit more off of it because why would they do something for free? Uh, so the, the pricing, though, the monthly payment actually was the same or a little bit better for a new one. So that's when I was just like, well, fuck it. So huh. then I'm looking at the new one. I build up a hybrid towing package, FX4 mm. package, 4x4, everything I wanted except for, you know, my turbo diesel. Because did you know those are $75,000? Yeah, no, so that's not an option. I'm not d- doing that good at life. Who's the shit kicking <laughs> redneck? Who is the shit kicking redneck that probably lives in Austin, Texas that gets that for 75,000? That's a lot of cheddar, bro. Well, so, I mean, you're, Scott, you're, I don't know him. I wish I Scott, did. <laughs> if you lived in a single wide on like 10 acres, you could get a, a fucking $75,000 car. Uh, perspective, say, Bob. You always, you always put it in perspective for me. I forgot. I, I don't, and I have a family I got to yeah. take care if, of. If, so. if, your, if your mortgage was like $570 a month, then, you know, then you could do that. So All right. Just, well, just saying. Not, not that everyone that drives a truck lives in a trailer. Yeah. I'm just saying that <laughs> different people have different <laughs> expenses and living situations. And if you have a lower expenses for your housing situation, then no, you can no. afford more on your no, vehicle sir. situation. No, sir. Out of context. <laughs> clip, clap, clap, clap. Bob just said, everybody that owns a truck lives in a trailer park too. You heard it here first, folks. That is the strip truth. Good night. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> so... No, no, I'm a little embarrassed. Uh, <laughs> hey, it's okay. Hey, I love your double wide, by the way. That you know, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was looking at the, that truck, and I was just like, "Well, what is the new Lightning?" Because I was just like, "Oh, the new new like Lightning is probably going to be an arm and a leg." Actually, they start at like thirty nine for a base model, which mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is bullshit. Two door, no. There's only room for like two people and maybe someone riding bitch it's a bucket stand, a very very cheap utility work truck is what that is so that's not really an option but then when you get to the packages there's the, right now there's the uh, the xlt the lariat and the platinum package well platinum oh, start at 75 so might as well get my turbo diesel at that point so that's out but then the the normal one starts the xlt starts at fifty two thousand. well that's actually the truck that i built that was a hybrid was mm-hmm. fifty two thousand. So mm-hmm. that was like, all right, so that's a wash and the XLT is a four by four. Well, so the lightning is already a four by four because they're all wheel drive. Oh. They have two electric motors, one in the front axle, one in the back that power all wheels all the time. So that's just how that is. So then I was looking at, all right, well, what's the Lariat? It's like 6,000 more. They start at 58. I was like, all right, well, you know, dad packaging is a Lariat. So maybe maybe, maybe I, I reach up and, and can handle that if I get it new and I get that, you know, better deal on the loan and everything. So I really am looking at reserving an F-150 Lightning so that when it drops in the spring of 2022, I can go pick me up a Lariat. That's, that's my plan. I like what's going on here. And I'll tell you a couple of things. It's interesting, of course, uh, being a little bit older gentleman as we are now. Um, when you hear fifty thousand dollars for a car, let's just say that you know, <laughs> it sounds it sounds outrageous, it's right? A but slap th- in the fucking face. But 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 look at this though. Here's my point though. Look at this. The car that Jamie has right now, 2013 uh, Turbo, um, 
Hyundai Santa Fe, right? Brand new, that's like almost 40 G's. And it's a internal combustion engine. Like, no, you know what? It, it, my point is, is like you're you're paying for what I'll just say is an outdated technology of how to how to power your car. And you're still paying le- like 10 grand less for, for a car from eight years ago. You know what I mean? So it's interesting because it's almost like the housing market in a certain sense. Like it's like, oh, $50,000 for a fucking car. That's outrageous. But it really isn't at the end of the day when you look about driving something off the lot and it's brand new 10 years ago that has no future proofing aspect to it energy wise. You know what I well, mean? Well, I also have a plan to have a zero net cost for powering that F-150 Lightning. Now hear me out. Okay, because I thought you said, or I thought you were going to go somewhere else with this. So I want to hear you out. So I'm listening. I'm paying attention. So I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to curious. need a new roof at some point in the next couple of years. I'm going to get a new roof. Oh. Jeez, talk about peppering it in, Bob. Do you want me to write you a check for this too? What's going on? Please, please. I was like, I got your down payment. What else, bro? What else can we do? So, <laughs> so when I do get the new roof, as soon as that's done, I'm going to call old JT. <laughs> 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 and, and and talk to him about some solar. So I want the new roof first, though, at, right? And then get the solar. And then once I get the solar, then I you get, get the, the chicks. chicks. <laughs> yes, yes, we are on the same page. Hey, so, did you already get the khakis though? Before all this? I, I, oh yeah, I, I'm a, I'm in. <laughs> I'm an man- IT manager, so you know I, I have plenty of the khakis. So not even not even well, shameless, but get out there and watch basketball, everybody. If you haven't seen it, it's Trey Parker and Matt Stone's second movie. Thank you. So once I get the solar, then I will power the lightning on my own plentiful New Mexico sunlight, which, mm. as you know, is pretty beastly. So um, mm-hmm. I will never not have power in that thing. And it, and base model, well, like base motor battery setup is 230 miles, but I only work like 40 miles away. So eh, I won't even touch that. And I can commute with that thing at no cost in fuel to me. So, and the trucks are cool. Like, um, you can power your house for a couple of days if the power goes out with your F-150. Like, it is set up for that already. Yeah, you should check out the brochure. It's pretty crazy. Do you know, you know what I'm picturing right now just because I'm, I'm, just, I'm just looking at myself here. But I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, like, powers going out in Denver for some odd reason, right? Just, it just goes out, right? And what the fuck was that? <laughs> it was a dramatic open. I must say, uh, well, Bob's got himself a cocktail beer. What is that? No, is that oh. a Red Bull? No, it's <gasps> it's Diet Dr Pepper, it, but it does taste more like re- regular Dr Pepper. So oh, I'm okay. no, 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 it's got it's, just, it's, <laughs> it's got like it's got what is it? Is it twenty four flavors, thirty six flavors? What is it? No, that's Baskin Robbins thirty six flavors. What the? Fuck? Anyways, um, my point is here, here's here's me going on that. Power goes out in Denver. It's it's the apocalypse, right? It is the apocalypse. The power goes out. The the entire grids are just off. But I want to cook a couple of racks of baby back ribs, which everybody wants well, to on do. the trigger, yeah, right? Yeah, right. During, but I can't do that because the electricity's out. But I've got my F one hundred and fifty Lightning in the driveway, ready to rock, ready to go, and I've been charging for my solar panels. So I plug in my Traeger to my Lightning. I'm just going to point out that your solar panels would power the Traeger as well, but. I shh, quiet. No, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, um, the, but the lightning basically allows me to do what I do now, and that's do workday ribs and cook them for eight hours. So the I, I would say this even better. Say you decided to go on an <laughs> overnight camping trip and your F 150 lightning. This right? is a little bit more reality driven. I don't like it already. Go and go you're ahead. just like, I'm going to take some workday ribs and the Traeger on this camping trip because I'm, I'm not going to pull any punches on this trip and yeah. we're going to, we're going to eat like Kings and Queens out here. So Fuck yeah, we that, are. that, that would be cool. You could take your Traeger with you, plug that thing into your truck while you're jamming out to some eighties hairband metal and, and, and cook your ribs all day. So, long. so I'm listening to white snake and docking why I'm making uh workday ribs. It sounds yeah. great. Sounds great, dude. And animal avoiding the apocalypse all at the same time. This is fun. <laughs> so, so beyond the F one fifty. Uh, there's a bigger picture to look at. Uh, the F-150 is kind of a microcosm. I just told Scott that I had one on one and gave the spiel as to why. And he's he's like, I'm going to talk about that no matter what. So we should just talk about it. So so there we are. But the energy of the future is definitely not gasoline. 
right? Yeah. It, it is definitely not oil. It is definitely not, definitely not fucking coal. Like in any way, we at least need petroleum for moving parts and lubrication for the foreseeable future. Unless at some point, like we use like some sort of vegetable oil or whatever that's renewable to, to do that. But for now, uh, we don't have that. Um, and we, we do need to move forward with all these alternatives. Now, th- the good thing about climate change is that we should be able to capture a lot more wind energy if we just put things in places like Florida, <laughs> Louisiana, <laughs> Mississippi, and Alabama. Uh, hurricane season, we just got a surplus of energy right down there. So, yeah, we sure do. So yeah, there, sure do. There, there are storms picking up is what I'm trying to say, but there's also renewable energy from uh, kinetic motion uh, factories. Have you seen these? I think they have one in the, the Northwest. I think they have one in Jersey. Um, that's actually like, they go up and down for the waves. Like I know they have them in Japan. So as the waves go, the waves themselves drive motors and produce energy. And so we use the kinetic, uh, the kinetic energy of the waves and the natural, you know, tides and the motion, motion of the ocean, baby, uh, <laughs> to, to get energy there. But obviously solar, wind, all of that. Um, we can't just keep burning stuff that has a finite amount. That's just dumb. We have to move on to non-finite energy at the very least. Uh, and that's just how it is. Now, I do have hope. Uh, we've talked about on the show before about the the advancement of technology is stifled by patenting in a free market economy, and it actually moves at the pace of doing business and profitability instead of at the advancement of technology, right? And what's good for society, because you do have to profit and maximize your profitability uh, as part of capitalism. And that's kind of where we're at right now. So we're not moving as fast as we could, uh, but we're moving as fast as we can. Very true. Well, and I will say this too. Um, what I've what I've what I've noticed here is there's a lot of vested interests at play, right? When you when you want to move away from fossil fuels, uh, petroleum, gasoline, oil, all that good stuff, right? All all one and the same basically. Um, there are a lot of people do not want that. I think this is the biggest thing. A lot of people do not want that because they will lose their money, lose their fortunes, the Bush family, you know, just to say one, they'll lose a lot of things. However. It does need to happen. And the biggest thing that people can do right now to avoid or to try to delay the inevitable, essentially, because you're right, we're we're using fossil fuels, they're depleting resources, eventually, we will have none of these resources. It's just the way it fucking is. Not only that, add to that, all the carbon output and emissions that are enhancing the destruction of of the environment in general right so there's there's twofold going on there but at the same time there's a reluctance to do so because of livelihood and profitability i will give you that you have you have family in the in the oil industry right a lot of these people are are uh, going to suffer uh, to say the least if we completely move away from fossil fuels right out of the gate and one of the big things that people point to is the exorbitant amount of upfront cost of setup for renewable energy, which is valid. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. There's there's a lot of fucking money that needs to be put out there, billions that needs to be put out there to have the infrastructure to have all of these green power plant, plant facilities and ways of doing things. But again, the Band-Aid needs to be ripped eventually. And here's my thing. One, why can't we live in a hybrid society? No pun intended with the cars, but a hybrid society for like, 10 years, five, 10 years, right? Where it's equally given, like everything is equal with renewable and and with fossil fuels because we understand there has to be that transition. And then here's the other thing. If we can pack billions and trillions of dollars into spending bills, which I won't even get into because it'll be another show about how ridiculous the end results are to some of these spending bills or just stuff they pack into them, why can't we redirect that for a little bit into the upfront cost of renewable energy? Take the fucking hit because we're already doing it for a lot of other shit, right? And just put the money out there to get where it needs to be. You mean going to debt for the right reasons? Yes, <laughs> I know. I, I I know that sounds weird, right? Uh, that and subsidizing journalism. I know. I'm a huge fucking socialist right now. Just call it what it is. But no, hundred percent, dude. Because I did some research earlier. And I was looking at, you know, I've heard a lot of things about uh, lithium ion batteries, right? The the biggest piece of the electric car that takes up 25% of the weight of the electric car. I mean, it's, it's a big component, right? 
it's how you go zero to 60 in 4.3 seconds is have a really cherry fucking battery with with just propulsion which is by the way another finite source yeah right now yeah right so but the, the biggest thing i ever heard and this is me just kind of glazing over things is like you know what's really ironic about fucking electric cars is it fucking puts out 10 times as much pollution and emissions to create uh, a uh, lithium ion battery for these electric cars than, than the life of a fucking, you know, the car after that. It, it's nonsense. It offsets itself. Kind of slice of true, maybe again, like 10 years ago, 20 years ago. However, all the car manufacturers now are manufacturing, not just the battery itself, because that is finite, but just manufacturing the cars and everything, all the energy needed to get to the end result. They're doing those now, or they have at least committed to doing that hundred percent in a carbon neutral way by like 2020 for some car makers, 2030 for other car makers, long story short, like the biggest, the biggest, I guess the biggest problem with going there from an energy standpoint, like it was almost a contradiction, like it was stupid to even do so is, is not going to be a thing as we continue to pro progress technologically and use greener resources for creating the energy to make the electric cars. So even that is a non-issue anymore. Right. But that's, that's what people like kind of hang their hat on and everything. And then the loss of jobs and all that stuff. Other than that, Bob, from doing a lot of research, I don't see a reason why we don't start just transitioning that way with a lot more steam and going that direction besides vested interest. And that's where it starts to get sad. Well, and that's it, because the vested interest has control of the fucking politicians. Mm -hmm. So that's why. And that's why our money keeps getting half-assed. You know what happens when you half-ass your money and you're like, well, we'll kind of address it for, for public opinion. But we won't actually like make a, a, a plan and move forward and just invest the money that's going to need. You start spending good money after bad, right? You start mm. your expenses start exponentially growing because you're problems. not, ex yeah. yeah, you're not exactly paying for it. You're just like trying to get the PR campaign to show that you're doing something about it, not actually doing something about it. Meanwhile, the tax dollars are still head that direction. Let's, let's just put all of our tax dollars in the, into that pot at once and build it. Now, I read the article that you had sent me. Uh, about uh, just kind of looking into, you know, the infrastructure, like yeah. um, we need new infrastructure. But then the thing that the article also pointed out is we're going to need new infrastructure anyway. Regardless, yeah. So, how much? How much? How much um, energy is lost through the systems that we have now in our infrastructure? Half. Just by, yeah, it's ridiculous, dude. Half so this of is, our energy produced is gone because of our garbage infrastructure. Yes. Yeah, so, so this is already a revamp that's needed. So again, going back to your shopping around for a car, dude. If you already got to get something going new, you might as well like create or 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 fix the problems from from the previous you know from the previous data set or whatever it just makes sense but yeah no that that's something already that's totally broken so everybody that holds on when when the, when the shit happened in texas uh during the winter right and um crazy snow you know knocked down their whole power grid people like see i told you you need fossil fuels i was like dude it doesn't fucking matter what you're using at that point in time you know what i mean you're already using a broken system because their infrastructure was shit yeah, it doesn't matter yeah. what's powering your shit infrastructure if your infrastructure yeah. is shit. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's point. like for the rest of the country, our infrastructure is slightly less shit. It's very similar, except for we may have, you know, heaters on our windmills and other parts of the country or whatever. But then the core infrastructure is basically the same. There's just more fail safes and redirect opportunities with a larger infrastructure with the rest of the country, as opposed to looking at Texas that doesn't have that. You know what I mean? So I mean, other than that, though, they're using the same tech. It's not like they're using some 70s tech in Texas and the mm -hmm. rest of the country is all modern with their fuck. No, it's just that we have such a large network and such a big geographic area that you can reroute problem areas through other parts of the country that aren't having problems. And you can solve energy problems and be a little bit more fluid that way, whereas Texas's infrastructure is much smaller and they deal with the same problem because of the size of their state as opposed to this huge U.S. size infrastructure. So. The, the, again, though, with the, the, your original point is, is that, you know, if if we're losing half of our infrastructure, I don't know what that equates to as far as a carbon footprint, <laughs> but I would imagine it's a lot of mm -hmm. wasted carbon emissions uh, mm -hmm. that we're not getting any sort of efficiency or gain from. So uh, we have to rebuild the infrastructure. And if we're going to have to rebuild the infrastructure, 
let's do it in a green way and, and let's start moving to that future instead of getting caught with our pants down when all of a sudden oil is now you know 20 or gas is now 25 dollars a gallon at the pump and the blue collar person can no longer go to work at all well and besides that too what better way to be energy independent if you don't have to rely on fossil fuels if you don't want to drill them in this country because there's still plenty of them here for now that are in countries that despise us or that have a lot of problems with us it makes sense to me that we we, we rip this bandit off right now completely it doesn't make sense I, I was reading something too i don't know if it was that article or another one i was reading but just the the world gdp growth from everything actually using renewable energy sources from infrastructure to output is exponentially um beneficial i i don't know how many billions it was saying but just from having that different that different structure in general is billions and billions of dollars pumped into the to the world gdp in general so again it's one of those things like what are you what are you going to do here are you going to sit here like it just ignore the problem that's going on and hope it goes away, knowing that it's inevitable. You're going to be coming to your doorstep again with, again, just, just using fossil fuels. I'm not even talking about the pollution aspect either. It's right. just using something that's fucking finite and relying on that for everything. What's your plan there? Is that your plan? Like, like literally that sounds so stupid when I say it out loud because, Hey, you know, we, we power the entire world off of this shit. Well, where is it? That's right here in this little pool of shit over here, but we're going to just keep drilling there. And I think there's going to be some over there and maybe some over there when we're done with that. But after that, well, what about after that? I don't know. It'll be like a hundred years from now. Who gives a fuck? Right. Is that the fucking plan? I mean, give me a fucking break, dude. It's, it's so stupid. And so there's cost saving, there's energy independence, in the works here too. I mean, there's so many other things that are in the play, in play here that are are being looked at blindly because of the vested interest. Well, and then the corporations do something very, very smart to divide the country on this common sense approach. Is yeah. they 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 get it politicized, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. now it's well, leaving oil makes you a fucking bleeding heart liberal, and this is sure. like, or it just makes me an American that like thinks about our future 100 years down the road and wants America to still have 10 out of 10 4th of July fucking days. Hey, and we're long gone there. and it's our kids' grandkids that are fucking blowing shit up. Now, <laughs> and I will say this, don't get me wrong. I enjoy, I enjoy blowing shit up. I enjoy putting smoke in the air. Um, I enjoy throwing shit on gas or throwing you know gasoline on fire. I enjoy these things. But it would be nice, like I said earlier, that if gasoline and other like petroleum based energy sources could be used for recreation or check this out for the people that went nuts and tried to use this for the texas thing could be used as a backup if the electrical grid does fail hey guess what we've got all these gas power generators ready to rock and roll when we need them again that kind of hybrid system where you have this stuff in storage ready to use if you need it for whatever kind of catastrophe or spoil the uh, spoil the moment kind of need well you're there, gonna have expense though scott you're back to your socialism because then you're going to have to have government subsidized fucking programs for emergency disaster recovery. It seems to me like there's a payoff there, though. There seems to me like a payoff. Yeah, I'm not talking a about the energy system doesn't sound like a negative thing. No, no it doesn't. I'm... <laughs> but yeah, I so I, I just I, I see the world right now. You putting all vest, vested interests and political things aside where we could be living in a hybrid system right now with everybody's understanding that we are going in the way of doing stuff where everything is using renewable energy sources because it's there. Now there's 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 also people that are say well solar's bullshit because it's not always sunny. Okay? Good thing there's not only just one kind of renewable energy, right? Same thing with wind. Oh, it doesn't right. always blow. Hydro is actually the most efficient and the most powerful and the most reliable right now. Rivers don't stop flowing. Yeah, it's just like, the way uh, the they go. power plant in Vegas. Yeah, doesn't happen. But again, there are people that criticize that and say well when you build these huge dams and you try to da, 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 it does change the ecosystem and the fish or blah, blah 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 okay again if we had more research more dollars going towards how to do this in a more friendly fashion for the ecosystem i i'm just sure we can get there that's that's how confident and how optimistic i am about if we keep going towards understanding how we can do this better and put the money there we'll probably figure out a way to do it and, and instead of again beating our head against the wall hoping that the oil drum doesn't just you know run dry and then well, what do we do and there he is 
Scotty fucking sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> no, hey. I agree. And, and Scott, there's hope. There's hope. This morning I got up and I turned on my light and I did not use whale oil. So Thank we've God. done this before. Thank we God. have transitioned into different energy sources before. I think we will again. Uh, I think that overall, the hold that corporations have on our advancement is a little bit more than it used to be. Uh, mm-hmm. But I still think that eventually we'll get there. Uh, I do. Uh, hopefully. hopefully we don't, you know, kill the planet and make it unlivable before that point. I sure hope so, because I, I sure like living here. I like having some hell or high watermelons on a nice sunny day, shoot my squirt gun at my kid and my dogs. It's just fun. So you, I want to keep this You know, this I, was, I was driving with my daughter the other day, and we're going to, uh, I don't remember, a store. Uh, but And she's just like, look at that. Look at this. Look at that. And she's like, you know, Dad, I like this earth. <laughs> I love the There's anatomy. so many beautiful things. I love this earth. And I was just like, huh, me too. Let's try to keep it that way. Well, I think that's a great way to end the show, Bobby, right there. You know what I'm saying? Well, Jadzia I, I just kind of clammed it up. She, she did. did. She did. She did. She so again, thank you so much. Happy 4th of July. Fucking America. Woo! Like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Uh, you know, Give us an email or something if you need anything or if you want any swag. Um, that's it. Uh, until then, uh, we'll see you next week. Take it easy, guys. Love you all. See ya.